Today we're starting a new series. We're going to call this series Tom Ball Museum Series. As you know, Tom Ball Museum wants me to identify and uh, tell them what tools, what woodworking tools they have and how to use them. And I've got four examples here from the museum that we're going to eventually get through all of these. I believe today what we're going to do is work on and focus on this compass pattern. This compass plane is manufactured probably uh, about 1893, and on the front of the plane, you can see it clearly marked Scioto Works, if I'm saying that correctly. This is a river just that goes through Columbus, Ohio. This actual tool was made from the Ohio Tool Company. There's two different grades that Ohio Tool Company made and graded their lumber with. They got grade one and grade two. This is a compass plane, and they did this with its other planes also. This would be, if it was up a higher grade, it would be marked Ohio Tool Company, but however, it's not. This is the lower grade. That just means it's a different grade of lumber they chose to make this body of plane for. Underneath the cap, it'll be marked Ohio Tool Company. Loosen the... Uh... So here, you can see... It'll say Ohio Tool. So all the irons, the, the first and second grade of their planes had the same iron, but they used different types of wood. So we're going to focus on this compass plane today. When I picked this up from the museum and I, and I held it in my hands, I felt the, the bottom of it. It's like, wow, that, that's really sharp and the, the, the blade is exactly right. I actually cut this curve with this plane. This works absolutely wonderful, works basically right out of the box. So we're going to, what we're going to do to this is we're just going to clean it up. We're not going to, we're going to sharpen it, straighten the, straighten the iron. Uh, we're going to, we're not going to take this, this, uh, these old marks off. We're going to clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit more presentable because they, what they're going to want me to do is use these tools as a demonstration one day. I'll be presenting to people, hey, this is how you, this is work, this is, this is what this does. So I'll, you know, have a somewhat decent tool, uh, clean tool. These other ones need, uh, need some help, especially this one. This is a tongue and groove plane, and I don't even believe that this is the right iron that goes into it. I believe that actually this is a chisel, something like this. You can see they're almost exactly the same thing. This is a hollow chisel. This piece of wood goes inside this handle. So when you hammer it, it hammers it in farther. I believe that that's what this is, and someone just kept hammering on it and flattened this out. Um, oh yeah, and there's a chisel name on here too. So this is actually a chisel. So I'm going to definitely do something about this. Um, it should be, the, the tongue and groove should be about the same. It's a little bit bigger, so we'll have to adjust that. But anyway, this is gonna be the challenge. These other two aren't too bad, they'll work. This is a uh, hollow plane. And this is a, a skewed rabbit plane to make little rabbits on the side of a board. So but we're going to focus primarily on just getting this little joker cleaned up and ready to use. We're going to start by just taking the, the, the dirt off, the real nasty, slimy, caked on dirt off this thing and the paint and everything else that's on here. Um, so the way that I do that, I just simply use a little bit of a denatured alcohol and paper towels and it looks like I have to get another can off the shelf this will get us started so paper towels and, and this uh, denatured alcohol will go to, go to town this is uh, 4 aught steel wool and I'm just gonna just very lightly come through and pay attention to how it feels on the wood. I don't want to push too hard. I just want to remove, you know, I don't want to clean it to the wood. I just want to get some of the dirt off and still keep patina onto the tool. You can see on the bottom of it, this was for me just, just using it a few times, testing it. That's why that is that color because I uh, used it briefly and just using it, the wood itself wiped off the dirt that was on here because this thing hasn't been used in who knows how long. I'm just gonna work a little bit right in this area. 
you can see the big, huge difference and change that is already presented. Granted, it's still wet a little bit. Okay. You know what we could do? Let's go ahead and clean the front of it up so we can see the, uh, the marking better. The Scioto Works marking, if that's how to say the name of that river. <laughs> I know that I'm probably butchering it. Well, this has got a lot of dirt on the front. Definitely revealed that name. There should be a marking or a number on here. Okay, this is a number three. And if I'm not mistaken, that uh, the three refers to the curve, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. So you get that. There's the company name. There's the three. A lot more caked on dirt here that we'll work on. We're just going to keep doing this until it's all clean. Okay, we finished uh, cleaning all the old dirt and everything off of it. Still patina on there. So what I'm going to do is use shellac just in case there's any ex actually exposed parts on this plane. Um, so we don't want this, if there are any exposed parts, we don't want this to soak up any kind of moisture or any of that kind of stuff. So we're just going to put a quick layer of shellac on here, which is probably used on here originally. So this will give it protection and you can see it's maintained that rustic look, if you like, that antique look, which is the patina look, which it should have. On the two mating surfaces where the wedge goes in and the body of the plane, the mouth of the plane, you don't want any, any kind of chemicals there. You don't want any shellac, you don't want anything there because that's gonna make a real tight, perfect fit. So we're just going to do the outside of this like it should. And this part will not be coated at all. See clean, it still has the patina on there. It's got the original dirt on here from the, from the iron. And we just want to make sure that that stays nice like that. And then the same thing with the inside of it. We're not going to hit any of these surfaces here with this. We're just going to hit the surfaces that the wedge will not be onto and the iron will not be onto, which is these surfaces here. And then that does it. So that this, this plane is now completely finished. And um, the body is finished. I'm going to do the iron next. Let me make sure that I got all this the way it should be. Still, there's a little orange paint. I did not want to scrub too hard. I did not want to take, take it down too far. Now we've got the body done, got the wedge done. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and deal with the iron and the cap iron. Let's go ahead and see if we can take this apart. I haven't tried yet, but there's a lot of dirt in here and things need to be cleaned up. Um, like I said, I'm not doing a restoration. I'm just cleaning it so it can be used in the museum. So it still has its patina, still has its dirt, just not as nasty and cruddy looking. And this will be on display and I'll be using this hopefully one day down there when they invite me to do live demonstrations. Let's see what happens. Oh yes, it does come out. Okay, that's a big, nice, big, thick iron, cap iron. And this thing is still super sharp. I mean, this thing is ridiculously sharp. It looks like they had a complete seal where the cap iron touched the iron. So that's beautiful. Ohio Tool Company, I can't read the rest of this. We'll clean this up and find out what that says. Iron looks to be straight, not bent up. Like I said, I'm not gonna take this out. I'm just gonna leave that there. And we're gonna make sure we have good mating surfaces. I am going to square the blade up, resharpen this perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. And it'll be a beautiful, usable tool. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is just hit these briefly on the, uh, the wire wheel. I don't even think that I'm going to um, uh, make this flat. I'm just gonna keep it like the original um, Craftsman. It's at an angle. Um, this probably just wore out and they sharpened it or they did that way on purpose. Um, so let's just touch this to the wire wheel and uh, see what we get.
Man, we don't want to clean it up too much. We just need to just get some of the dirt off of it. It's real brief. We don't want to shine it. We just want to get the major, major stuff off of it. Like that's just all we need to do. Oh, you see the end part right there? But we do need to clean this up because that touches the um, the end of the iron. That's it. That's all we need to do. Let's kind of touch it. That's it. So we're just going to go through and get all the, the big stuff off, sharpen the iron, and call it a day. So let's work on this for a few minutes. So uh, since this, this uh, iron is, is already pretty dang sharp, I'm just going to make sure that the back of it's flat. And I'm using a 1200 stone right now. And I'm just going to go a few times and then look at the wear and because this this is really really sharp already but we're going to make it even sharper um see you can see we're going to work on this we're going to make sure that all this is completely flat on the tip here so we're going to work on that for a few minutes and put it on a strop well it's taken about 45 minutes down to get it to this level you can see a little bit here on the corners which i think this is fine there's a burr on the front of this I can feel, which is you need that burr. I'm not even going to hit this on the stone. All I'm going to do is move directly to my strop, and I'm going to take that burr off uh, on the bevel side, and um, that's all we need to do is just, is just hit it on this about 40 times, and um, we'll take that burr off. See, I moved a little bit to the back, so let me, so I can see a little piece of metal in here. It's not completely all the way off. Okay, that's about, that's what I'm looking for right there. Look at the, the shiny on the very tip of this thing. All that is shined and polished right on the very tip. The burr is gone. This thing is unbelievably sharp. Okay, let's go ahead and get this set up. Do some cuts with it. And uh, bevel it down. I didn't change the... The way that the last craftsman used this with the, the angle, the pitch, or anything with the with the cutting surface of the iron, all I did was um, sharpen it. And I left. Was gonna I was gonna straighten it, but I think this is fine. Okay, now let's get this uh, let's get this in here and get it going. Let's see what happens here. Have we got a cutting surface yet? We do. Go ahead and. All right. We're going to go a little bit farther with the iron. It might be too much. There we go. Nice. There we go. Compass plane at work. Eighteen what ninety five and eighteen ninety eight compass plane. Now it's about a nineteen twenty nineteen thirty five. Remember this one is adjustable. This is my go-to, and I'm gonna adjust the flex of it. And there we go. Two different generations, two different makers. Beautiful. Now, Tomball Museum has a working piece.